In this video, we're going to talk about taking everything personally, and I'm going to give you five tips to help you gain a little bit more of your confidence. Sit tight. So I am no stranger to taking things personally. Uh, I don't as much anymore as I used to, but um, it's always this idea of uh, feeling rejected. If somebody doesn't uh, text you or call you back or um, you feel like people don't like you in a job or somebody's giving you the evil eye or something like that, um, we can have this habit of, of taking things very, very personally in our lives. And it becomes essentially a habit. It just becomes part of our, our life and our insecurities. And um, it's something that um, a lot of us struggle with. A lot of people struggle with this. So in this video, we're going to talk about it and I'm going to give you some tips to help you gain back some of that confidence because I know you have it in you, we all do, um, and to uh, kind of erase this idea that, um, that people are out to get you, essentially. So number one is to learn to love your brain for what it's doing for you. Now, basically, you know, the brain is trying to reinforce um, things or what it believes uh, things to be true from your past to try to protect you. So we should learn to accept that first and foremost and not fight with it all the time saying, oh, what's wrong with me? Like, why do I feel this way? I'm so insecure. Just realize that um, our brains can form any kind of narrative that it wants. And we all know that a lot of times truth can actually be very subjective and is not actually truth. So. You know, when you take things personally, it's your brain just reinforcing this concept or what it believes, this perception of a situation that maybe it, it deems as similar uh, to try to prevent more, to, you know, save yourself from risk or harm, keep you safe. So the more we can love it and, and look at it from that angle, um, we can kind of pick apart, okay, this is a normal reaction, defensive mechanism, protective mechanism, that, that kind of thing. Number two, rise above the ego. So this kind of ties into number one a little bit. Often our perceptions, like an Instagram filter, are fake. You know, there's a person behind it, but the overall covering, aesthetic appeal, whatever, is fake. So if we can pick apart truth from reality, just realize this. And this may be a, a, a large pill to swallow, I guess, for a lot of us, is realizing that the world doesn't always revolve around us. It's kind of like, I'll give you the example of, have you ever been to a concert and, um, and you're pretty close and you make eye contact or you think that the guitar player makes eye contact with you or the singer makes eye contact with you, when really they have lights in their face, they probably can't see crap, but you, think that they're looking directly at you and you're like, oh my God, like this person just looked at me into my soul and they know me. Well, maybe not that far, but have you ever had that experience where you feel like somebody just made eye contact with you and really um, it seems that way as kind of the perception of it, but it may not necessarily be true because they have light, bright lights shining in their eyes most of the time. So it's kind of like that where we form this, or our ego forms this, not us, but the ego forms this um, idea that we're so important that, um, you know, everybody, their lives, they have nothing better to do than, than worry about us all the time. And I know that, count, that kind of sounds harsh, but sometimes I think we need the reminder um, within ourselves to really get that concept and be like, dude, this is not what, you know, what I'm worrying about here and worry is, is wasted brain energy is not actually reality because maybe the other person has an emergency or maybe this or maybe that. Sure, maybe they are avoiding you, but if you're gonna waste energy uh, focusing on that and giving all of your attention to that, then you're going to um, make it larger than the reality of it. Number three, truly define confidence in your life. True confidence 
doesn't come from the approval of other people, it comes from within. It doesn't come from waiting for another person to uh, tell us that we're wonderful. It comes as a deep, innate, inner wisdom and power, our growth throughout life, our experiences, all that kind of stuff. That makes us confident, that makes us powerful. Not somebody on social media telling us we're great. So we have to define that for ourselves. And a lot of times we get caught up in our head and we're looking for the attention on the outside when really true confidence can't come from anything out there. You can still be very insecure, um, and still have a lot of attention from people. We know this, right? So we have to find that place of inner quiet and inner confidence and inner peace. Um, what makes us great where we don't have to rely on other people to get back to us all the time. Number four, breathe deeper. A lot of times when we're in our head and we're thinking about um, something or someone or a situation, we're not present within ourselves. And a lot of times we're not breathing properly comes down to that. Um, we're in our head space more than our heart space or our, in our bodies. Um, so just practice, you know, whenever you feel moments of the thoughts popping up in your head, um, really take the time to take a few deep breaths in and out and try to actually feel in your body, ground yourself. The other little thing that you can do is imagine that your brain is like this giant switchboard. And whenever, um, an inse uh, insecurity pops up in your brain. It's like one of those lights pops on the switchboard. So imagine yourself whenever um, any kind of insecurity pops up in your head about a person or about this or a relationship or job or whatever, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Imagine, you know, the little light pops up and you switch it back off. You switch it back off. So sometimes it helps to do little like images form little images in our brain to help us remember to help us put us in the present moment so if we're breathing deeper um, we're, we're doing things where we imagine ourselves actually releasing that thought and not attaching to it because we're gonna have all kinds of thoughts all day but that doesn't mean that we have to attach to a thought and that we have to make it part of our reality necessarily um, all I'm saying and number five, and my favorite, is to put the focus back on your strengths and away from other people's strengths. You know what I mean? We spend so much time focusing on only our flaws or we're comparing ourselves to other people's strengths and talents and abilities that we forget about our own. We say, I'm not talented or, um, you know, I'm a loser, blah, blah, blah. Just realize you're born with innate talents and abilities. And no, I don't necessarily mean you could paint like a mad painting or uh, your, your perfected just break dancing out of nowhere um, can be, but you probably have things about you um, that you don't even realize that you're good at. Maybe you're really patient, you're a great listener, you have high morals, um, high values in life. Maybe you're great at writing poetry or just writing in general. So it doesn't have to be art. Maybe you have this just knowledge of ancient Greek history out of nowhere or a love for it or something like that. So it can be anything really that you can tap into to remember your strengths, to bring you back into that place of innate power and wisdom and away from focusing on what's so great about other people. Well, yeah, other people can be great and have great talents, but what about me? What about you? Why are you forgetting what's great about you? Why are you always comparing yourself trying to, to um, you know, fit in the shoe of somebody else? This is going to be uncomfortable. Why don't you embrace who you are and what you're good at. I know I'm getting kind of deep here and away from, um, you know, just not think, taking things personally, but I think it's very tied into your inner strength and abilities and putting less focus on other people and giving all of your power and attention to other people and putting it more on yourself. And no, it's not selfish. It's self-cultivation, it's self-empowerment. So that's a huge, huge part of shifting your perception and rising above um, this, these insecurities. And you have insecurities, we all have insecurities. 
but realize that's more of the ego and it's trying to protect you and that's the human aspect of us. But if you can shift to a more, you could say spiritual aspect or um, like your higher self, a higher perspective, then you can start to change how you're thinking in, in situations. And yeah, you're gonna have times where you're gonna feel impulsive to do things and the brain's gonna revert back to what it knows. Oh my God, like nobody likes me or I'm feeling very rejected. Feel that, okay? This can be another tip. Feel it, don't push it away, okay? Feel the rejection, okay? So I feel rejected. Okay, that's how I feel. And I'm going to accept that, not be like, I don't wanna feel this. I'm going to accept it, I'm gonna rise above it, and I'm going to move on. And I know that may sound easier said than done. It probably is harder <laughs> than it sounds uh, for a lot of people, um, but it's baby steps. Little shifts in perception is going to help you. Little shifts in the way that you see yourself. Little shifts in the relationship with yourself. Hey, you can't, um, you can't expect to feel fully confident if you don't love yourself in the process, right? So take more time, do things for you, practice on breathing and just feeling in your body and paying attention to the things that you're naturally good at, the things that you naturally gravitate towards and love in life. And you know, what did you do when you were before the age of three, maybe you don't remember that, or when you were little, you know, the things that you embraced and you didn't have all these insecurities and things like that. So anyway, I won't make this too long, but um, hopefully this helps a little bit in gaining some of the confidence back, you know, with shifting your perception and not always feeling like, you know, placing your attention on other people's perception of you, because a lot of times that's skewed so it's defining uh, confidence, separating truth from reality, okay? Separating the narrative that your brain has constructed versus what it really could be, could be a lot of things in life. Anyway, have a great day. I will see you on the next video. Subscribe if you haven't done so. I put out new videos every one to two weeks. Um, hit that like button, leave me some comments, and see you next time. Peace.